Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite hobbies, which is panoramic photography. Now, in order to do this, ideally, you'll have a tripod head that's well suited for panoramic photography. Here, I'm using a tripod head from Really Right Stuff. Now, they have specific heads that are for panoramic photos, but I find that even the base models still work very well. What you're looking at here is you'll see that there's actually degree increments marked out on the tripod head. And we could turn the camera head in specific degrees. So when shooting, what we'll generally do is do 15 degree turns of that tripod head. And that'll give you some overlapping photos. So you'll take the camera and you'll actually just mount it right into the tripod head. Ideally putting the camera in a vertical or portrait orientation and then you'll turn the tripod head 15 degrees as you take the shots. Now, that's the ideal way. I have done panoramics where I've actually just handheld it and turned it my waist, and that works really well if you're just doing five or six shots that you want to stitch together. You're going to be out sometimes with a camera and not have all your gear with you, just the basics, and so you can do these handheld. Photoshop's very forgiving. Let's see how we could take our panoramic photos that we shoot and combine them together using the panoramic stitching inside of PhotoMerge. So one of the end results you can get when you take multiple panoramic images and stitch them together is you can actually make interactive panoramic photos like you see here. Now this is using the QuickTime VR technology and I actually stitched these together in Photoshop but then used a program called VRWorks to make this interactive QuickTime movie. There are other ways to do it, so that's just one of many, but it's really cool because you can pan around the image, you can actually zoom in and see things, pull back out, and it adds a great level of interactivity. That VRWorks program even goes as far as allowing you to click on an individual door and then jump to the next scene inside, so you can create hotspots to link multiple movies together. So it's really quite cool. Let's see how we go ahead and create these using PhotoMerge. Now, one of the easy places to start is inside a bridge. Let's just go ahead and switch to our folder with our panoramic photos, and we'll do this basic pano. Here's the end result of what we're going to get. We'll grab this here, and you'll see that we have several images together. Now, I'm going to shrink those down for a second and make this a little larger so you can see things. And notice here, we have six photos going into this panoramic. There is a little bit of overlap between these images. If you look in the preview area, you can see that. Notice here how we have the hump, and here it is repeated in the next photo. Here's this peak, which repeats right here in the next photo. So by turning that camera with about 15 degrees, we actually get that overlap. To do a full 360 degree photo, you would actually need around 24 pictures to get it. By keeping your camera in the portrait orientation, you're going to cut down on the distortion that you would get by taking wider images and having to bend them more. Now, there's lots of ways to shoot panoramics. The great news is, is that Photoshop is super forgiving in how it puts them together. Let's go ahead and grab these pictures here, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. Now, when you do that, a new dialog box comes up, and there's lots of options here. Auto is generally going to work for most cases. You want to choose to blend the images together, and then you simply click OK. Now, some of the new options in CS4 include the ability to do vignette removal, if you actually have that from the camera lens, and to fix geometric distortion caused by things like fisheye lenses. So these have been improved. Let's go ahead and click OK and let this run. And Photoshop goes ahead and opens up all of those images and starts to combine them into a single document. Now it's going to take a second, but it has to align those layers. But it did a great job there. You'll notice that it staggered them. Let's go ahead and take that image full screen. And it blended them together. So absolutely fantastic there, incredibly fast. If we start to turn some of these off, you'll see it did a great job of detecting the edges and actually masking around it to create a great blend between the individual photos. When you're satisfied, you can go ahead and choose Crop and crop this image out to taste. And you might want to go ahead and merge those layers together once you're happy. 
Now, obviously an image like this, we're gonna wanna extend the sky, do a little bit of color correction, but still just a fantastic wide view of our scene. And that's really impressive when you're shooting great looking vistas, mountains, outdoor scenery, etc. These panoramic photos can really come in handy and let you take some great shots that really capture the moment. Now, let's take a look at those 360 degree photos and how those get stitched together. I'm gonna go ahead back to Photoshop and we'll choose File, Browse in Bridge. And that's gonna send us over to Bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the photo merge here. And I've got a 360 degree photo. Now this one contains 24 exposures and I shot it in a full 360 degrees, and this is in Zadar, which is over in Croatia. Now, this is gonna work fantastic. When I shot this picture, it was important that I kept the camera on manual exposure. If you're on auto exposure, you're gonna get a lot of variations as you swing that camera around and the lighting conditions change. So it's important to go ahead to manual and set the exposure for sort of the brightest area in the scene so you don't get anything overexposed. It's okay to have things a little bit dark because we can always tweak that. Plus the photo merge command is gonna do a great job of actually blending those tonal values together. We got 36 images selected here. I'm gonna go ahead and say tools, Photoshop, photo merge. Now I'm working with slightly scaled down JPEGs to speed up this process, but the photo merge command works great on TIFF files or even raw images. And of course, you can work with 16-bit images to get some great color. We're just using JPEG today to speed up the process because those of you watching at home probably don't want to sit there and watch the progress bar grow. So we've got everything loaded here. We're going to go ahead and choose this. And what I could choose is either auto or since this is a full 360, we can use spherical. Let's try that. We'll go ahead and tell it to do any geometric correction as needed and we'll click OK. Photoshop's gonna go ahead and open up all 24 of those images and combine them into a new multi-layer document. And it's plowing through that right now. You see the progress here over in the Layers panel as all those images are opened and combined. Once it has all the images open, it's gonna take a second as it thinks to process those and align all of the edges. But it's still pretty fast for what it's doing. Now, while that's running, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Depending upon your processor speed, et cetera, it could take several minutes. If you feed it really high resolution images, I've seen it take anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Don't be bothered if the progress bar takes a little while to update, just let it run. And for best results, make sure you go to your scratch disk preferences and actually give it some extra space. Opening up and processing 24 images takes a lot of RAM. So if your system isn't really beefy, just give it some more virtual memory by going to your scratch disk preferences. You can access those by choosing preferences and going over to performance where you can actually target additional drives if you have them hooked up to your system. Now, once this is all done, you'll see that it did a great job of actually merging the photos and blending around them. You might see some little lines here don't be bothered by those. If we zoom all the way in, you'll see that they're not actually there. That's just a redraw error when we're all the way zoomed out like that. So a lot of resolution there to work with. And this is just about set. We can go ahead and turn this into a full 360 degree panorama. Now, you're gonna need that panorama to take it into another program and work with it. The challenge here is that the image is not a full loop. If you look at the left edge of the screen, you see we have these fences and here's the tree. And if we look over here on the right, you see the same thing. In fact, this rock right here is the same as this rock right here. So obviously we need to create that seamless loop on the left and the right edge. Now, Adobe's been working on some things, but I've got my own Photoshop action that does this that I'd like to share with you. If you visit our website at CS4, that's CSFOUR.com, you could download my panoramic 360 degree action that will take your stitched photos and go ahead and automatically create a left and right edge that's gonna work. Here's how it goes. Call up your actions panel, windows, actions, and then download the action from my website. Once you have it, you can click on the submenu and choose load actions. You can go ahead and navigate to the folder where you stored it and load that up. 
and there's just one action in the set currently. If I come up with anything else useful, I promise I'll post it. We've got the cs4.com website, as well as my regular blogs over at Raster Vector and Photoshop for Video. Both of those contain Photoshop info. But you can go ahead and select that and click Play. And what this does is it actually merges it down, splits the layer, and then uses the new Auto Blend technology inside of Photoshop CS4 to align things. It takes a little bit of time, but it's going to make a seamless transition from the left to right edge. There we go. It's done. It says crop as needed if we need to move anything off the top. You'll see we have just a little gap up top there, so I'll go to Image Canvas Size, and we'll just reduce the height of this to 28. There we go. And what I want to show you now is how this is a seamless image. If we choose Filter, Other, Offset, we could test it. As we push this image from left to right, notice there is no seam. This is where the seam was on that building. And over here on the rocks, and notice, absolutely no seam whatsoever. So, I worked on this action for weeks. <laughs> I wish it took less time, but I was just striving to get it perfect. So this works great, whether you're using the spherical or the automatic presets. If you've got a full 360 degree panoramic image and you want to actually clean up the left and right edges so it's a true full 360, works fantastic. Those of you working in motion graphics, you can combine this with a great new plugin from over at Trapcode that they have called Horizon that'll actually make a full 360 degree environment that you can use this inside of After Effects with green screen material and 3D cameras. And for those of you who are into creating QuickTime VR, be sure to check out programs like VRWorks where you can actually turn these into full interactive panels. Again, the end results are pretty impressive. Let's just go ahead and fire that back open real quick. And it looks like this. This is the same photo you just saw me stitch and we can zoom in and take a look at the details because it's a high resolution photo as well as pan around and look inside the image. So, with that addition of that great auto blend technology and working with panoramic photos inside of Photoshop CS4, it's going to open up a whole new hobby or new professional outlets for your creativity. Be sure to check those out. Remember, all you got to do is jump into Photoshop and choose File, Automate, Photo Merge, or access that command from inside of Adobe Bridge. That's it for this episode of Photoshop CS4 Sneak Peek. I'm your host, Rich Harrington. We've got a lot of cool things that you can check out over at our website at cs4.com. That's cs4.com. We've got a great contest going with prizes that you can win, as well as all of the other episodes in the training series. So be sure to check that out. If you'd like to learn more about Photoshop on a regular basis, we have some ongoing podcast series you might be interested in. The first is called Understanding Adobe Photoshop. You can find out about it at rastervector.com. It's for general interest Photoshop enthusiasts, digital photographers, graphic designers, web folks. As far as those of you working in video and motion graphics, you're going to want to check out our other series, Photoshop for Video, and its blog at photoshopforvideo.com. So, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Rich Harrington, and tune into our other episodes. Thanks.